Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome I'm Shannon and I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist and I mostly specialise in coloured pencils but for today's tutorial we'll be using graphite to draw this lovely rhino. Now I like using graphite every now and then just to have a little bit of a change and to focus purely on the light and dark areas and not think too much about what colour is going to go where. And graphite's also a really good option for those who are brand new to learning how to draw and just want to focus on getting the shading and the contrast and all that sort of stuff right before going and delving into colours because it does get a little bit more complicated as soon as you start adding colour into the mix. So yeah, it's just a fun little study and a way of developing our drawing skills without having to think too much. So for this tutorial I'm going to be using a piece of Strathmore Bristol Vellum from the 300 series and I've been using this paper for most of my recent tutorials over on Patreon for coloured pencils but I've not used it yet for graphite so I'm interested to see how it will perform. It's quite a reasonably priced paper which is why I use it for tutorials now because it's pretty easy for my students to get hold of so I'll link everything that I use down below in the description. I am using a piece of the 9 by 12 inch size paper but I've made the line drawing small enough to fit onto A4 if that's the size that you can get hold of. So I'll also leave the line drawing down below and a little video on how to go about tracing it. Now you can have a go at freehand in this if you want to but I would recommend tracing it and then you know the proportions are right and it's just a case of filling the rest in with all of the shading and stuff. But yeah, that's totally up to you, but I will leave the link to that down below as well. Now the pencils that I have picked up for this tutorial, I've bought a brand new set and I purchased them on Amazon as well because I just thought I'd see what came up first and it is the Derwent Graphic 9B to H soft graphite pencils. So I'm interested to see how these perform. Like I said, I've never used them before. I think I used the Mars Lumograph ones previously. I'm not sure what brand because it's rubbed off, but yeah, I mean, a graphite pencil is a graphite pencil at the end of the day. So if you've got a different brand, just use the ones that you have. But yeah, I'm not too fussy about graphite, to be honest. Maybe it's because I've not tried that many, but yeah. I will also link the reference down below so that you can download that as well, should you choose to. This is from Unsplash, I believe. So it's a royalty-free stock photo, which means that anyone has permission to use it and then do as you please afterwards if you wanted to have a go at trying to sell the drawing or put it on some merchandise like greeting cards you have the option to do that because it is a royalty free stock photo so yeah that is just the introduction to the tutorial and then i'm gonna zoom right into the face and we can get started on the first section there we go, so I've zoomed into the face and this is where we're going to start. I always like to start with the eyes and then move outwards because if you haven't got the eyes right, I feel like the whole thing will just look a little bit off and weird. So that's just my personal preference. I do like to start with the eyes and sort of go from there. So I'm hoping this will be quite a quick little tutorial, but famous last words, I am quite a slow drawer generally. The more experienced I've got over the years, the slower I've got because I feel like now I spot little details that I didn't used to see before. So who knows how long this is going to take, but with it being graphite, it'll certainly be quicker than a coloured pencil piece. So the main thing to consider with something like this is to just enjoy the process. Don't try and focus too much on the end goal because you probably will just lose your patience a little bit. Think more about enjoying it as you go and if it turns out good then great and if not then at least you enjoyed it. So you might surprise yourself with what you'll be able to create but anyway. So I've just got the reference in front of me on my iPad. It is quite like a high contrast reference so there's a lot of shadows that are really dark and sort of like cast over the face a little bit and one of the legs is really dark. It's obviously like some bright sunshine that's creating those shadows but it'll be quite fun to draw those in I think. I think we'll be surprised at how dark we need to go with some of these areas but yes I am going to start on the eye. Now it's been a while since I've used graphite so I feel a little bit rusty hoping that I can get <laughs> into it pretty quickly. I think it's always a safe bet to start with the HB. 
So yeah, using the HB from the Derwent Graphic Soft Graphite Pencils and I've got a little bit of just like transparent paper underneath my hand. Just use whatever you can get hold of like printer paper or anything. Just stops it from smudging. And I think what I'll do is just start to sort of draw into that eye a little bit. Now I'm always looking at the reference when I'm drawing because you don't want to sort of make things up and think, oh, I think this looks like this. No, I'd keep looking at it and check that everything's in the right place. So this eye sort of like goes up a little bit like that. Bit of a, an unusual shape. And we will be darkening it up to get more of those like shadows in. First impressions with this paper, it just goes on very easily. It's quite like a slippy paper. I usually use um, hot press watercolour paper for like my commissions and stuff, but more recently I have been enjoying this, especially for tutorials. I think what I'll do is just start to bring it out a little bit, really, really gently, like you do not need to press on hard. I like to work lightly and just keep adding to it than to go in really hard and not be able to like take it away if I make any mistakes so yeah just gonna work that around. I actually have some cotton buds with me as well. I don't usually use any blending tools for graphite but I feel like it'd speed things up a little bit if I did use something like this, a little cotton bud. And I might even have a go at just like smudging that out a bit around the eye. Just want to see how it performs on this paper. Just helps to cover a little bit more surface area. There are some like little wrinkles around the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, I've got a putty eraser which is really good for drawing because you don't get any of those annoying little bits and you can mould it into any shape. I think this one's a Faber-Castell one and it's just really useful for taking the pencil off and it takes this off very easily so yeah keep that in mind it does come off very easily and then I'm going to take this just under the eye really lightly again HB pencil and let's use a little cotton bud again. If you hear any like noises in the background there's a lot of work going on near the house at the minute. We live on a farm and I think they're like putting concrete down or something so there's trucks up and down all the time but hopefully it won't be too disruptive. Okay, so we're sort of just establishing sort of like the base. With coloured pencils you have like a base colour that's the lightest colour that you then work on top of but because we're not really using colours in this tutorial but because we're not really using colours in this drawing it's sort of just a case of establishing like a light layer of graphite and then we can work on top of that. So I've just dabbed that little line away there. I'm just going to map that back in. That's a habit from coloured pencils where I take the outline away because we don't want any graphite showing but I suppose it doesn't really matter with this does it? <laughs> Still in coloured pencil mode. I'm just going to make sure that's there just to act as a bit of a guideline so that we know where that is. And then I'm just going to Build a bit more up around there. Around here. And then smudge it again. I do like to work in very small sections as well. Just to make sure that everything's in the right place. I'm not one to like work on a huge bit and like 
build all of the layers up everywhere. I like to do one little section right and then move on to the next section. But I am like a like detail obsessed perfectionist. Okay, that'll do for now. We've got a little bit of like a, a base of graphite and we've got some of the main bits mapped in. So what I might do is I might just move on to the B. Or if you don't have a B, a 2B. So I'm just going to darken the eye up a little bit. So I'm looking for the shapes again. It's like some little lines and stuff. And there's actually like a little bit of an upper eyelid here that just sort of like comes out. Just do little taps with the pencil if need be, just to gradually build it up. I do like to work from like H down to B, if that makes sense. So start with like the lightest one and then the softest, darkest one use at the end. So coloured pencil you work light to dark and I'll be doing the same with the graphite pencils. So. Just blending that in and then I'm also going to start just adding some of these little wrinkles in. So there's like two that come up here. So again, I'm not pressing on hard at all, being very soft. And then there's one that sort of like comes down here a bit. And up here. So keep looking at that reference and seeing where these are. A little bit coming down from the eye there. Bring it across a bit. So again, that's still quite a hard pencil, like it's not very smudgy. Unlike the 9B, that would be really easy to smudge and it'd be really dark, so... We'll work our way up to those pencils. I don't know if I'll go all the way down to 9B, but we'll see. There is actually like a little bit that just sort of comes down from that wrinkle there. And it starts to like form a bit of a, a weird load of wrinkles here. I'm just going to map those in. I can see where they are. And then here I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to sort of map in some of those wrinkles. I just like to say here while we're still in the early stages that there is no one way to draw anything. Like the way that I'm showing you how to draw isn't like the be all and end all. It's not like the only one way this is just how I would naturally think to approach something like this. So yeah, take it with a pinch of salt. It's not like the one way to draw. <laughs> I think it's always good to like try a few different tutorials from different artists and see what sort of techniques you want to take from each and sort of like form your own sort of way of doing things that you like doing, but yeah. It's not like the one and only way to draw, I'm just sort of giving you a way to draw. So back to the HB, I might just start to like shade in between a little bit, really lightly again, just to darken it up a bit more. And I might use my little cotton bud just to blend that in a bit. This works really well for this rhino because a lot of it is just sort of like 
skin. If I was doing fur, I'd probably approach it a bit differently, but because it is a lot of like flat sort of skin texture, well, it's got like bumps and stuff on it, but you know what I mean? It's like there's not loads of different tufts of fur sticking out everywhere. This sort of blending will be really useful for this, so. But yeah, it's already starting to form a little bit of a shape now. Might just go back to the B. Start to just darken those bits up a little bit more. See, once you've sort of started to establish areas, you can afford to go a little bit darker on top. So I always like to add more slowly and gradually rather than going really dark straight away. Might even start to like blend a bit of this B. Into the skin. And here's my little cotton bud, just blend it out a bit. So a lot of it's going to be like adding, blending, like adding the details back in darker until we're happy with how it's looking. And this is also a case of me like trying to get into the feel of it. It takes me a little while to like get into the feel of a drawing. Let's try 2B now, or just a darker pencil than what you've been using. So, yeah, this is going to be a bit darker. So applying the same pressure, we get a bit of a darker sort of, I want to say colour, but it's, you know what I mean, a darker look. So just going over those little wrinkles again. a bit more to that one and I'm going to darken the eye up a little bit more. And I might be tempted to just start to build up a little bit more shadow into some of these wrinkles. Mostly sort of at the bottom of each area of skin so like so just above the lines, so that it looks like it's more of a 3D shape. And let's add a little bit more depth around here. Gonna bring those wrinkles round to the right a little bit more. They sort of like curve back upwards a little bit. You could probably also use graphite powder for something like this, but I don't have that and I wanted to try and keep it simple and show that you can just create something with pencils alone. But yeah, there's lots of different ways of doing things. It's just a case of finding your style, the way that you like to do things, and yeah, no one's going to be exactly the same. So just building that up a little bit more there. What I might do is, using this 2B still, I want to sort of create a bit of a bolder line there where that really dark area is. I, I tend to like to map in the darkest areas, and then we can see exactly how dark the rest of it needs to be. I just find that easier with graphite or coloured pencils just to like create that guideline. It's just something to refer to. There we go. And then back to the HB, I think what I'll do now is just sort of create a bit of a base bit of graphite here. So just lightly going over So we don't want to scratch the paper, we're just 
add in a light wash of the graphite. But yeah, this, this reference was originally a colour reference and I've just edited it to be black and white. So you can do that with any image that you like, if you like a particular reference, but you want to do it in graphite, just edit the image on your phone or whatever and make it black and white. Play around with the contrast and brightness and exposure and stuff and it will just be easier to draw from that way. So I'm just going to use my cotton bud. Blend that out a bit. But yeah, I was heavily inspired by a trip that myself and fellow wildlife artist Zoe Fitcher, you've probably heard of her. We have been invited to host a trip and we've been sharing all of the details on Instagram. And the trip that we're going to be hosting together is to Kenya, Africa. And we'll be doing safaris and seeing animals in the natural habitat and all that sort of stuff so yeah I was heavily inspired by that and I really just wanted to draw some sort of African wildlife so when I saw this image I was like yes that is what I'm gonna do for my next YouTube tutorial. It's been a long long time since I've done a YouTube tutorial I'm so sorry about that if anyone's been waiting. I've just not had the time but now I finally do so I thought it was about time that I sat down and actually started a new one. So just making sure that that's nice and blended. Thankfully because the skin is a little bit like lumpy and bumpy and imperfect looking, if you get something a little bit wrong on this I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. Like it's quite a forgiving reference to draw. Right let's go back to the B graphite pencil now and I'm just going to start looking for any little details like any little wrinkles or areas where it's a bit darker and just start to like map those in a little bit so you can be quite loose and hold your pencil quite like far down it helps you to get a bit more of a loose stroke or little squiggles we're just starting to yeah, build it up a little bit. It's already starting to take shape quite nicely and we've only used three of 12 pencils. <laughs> Sometimes I just use like four or five graphite pencils and don't use the full pack but it's totally up to you whether you want to try and use all of them or just stick stick to a few, keep it simple. I'm just going to map in this bit here, there's like a little darker bit. And then there's actually like a little lighter bit in between so we can either draw around that or we can use the eraser to add that back in. But I tend to try and draw around stuff a bit and then if I really can't get the effect then I'll use the eraser. But that's totally up to you as well. I'm just going to use the cotton bud again. Just blend it in a bit better. So you can actually be quite rough with this. Which is good. It is actually quite a good tutorial for beginners really because... It is so forgiving and it's not like you have to be absolutely perfect with everything. My style isn't very loose, I'm very like rigid and like detailed and I like to get things looking as realistic as possible. But if you have more of like a an expressionist sort of style or that's what you naturally sort of draw like without even trying then you can do that as well sort of be a bit looser with your drawing okay i think i might add a little bit of the 2b again just ever so slightly darken up some of these little wrinkles and stuff again i 
A lot of people are really put off drawing elephant skin or rhino skin, I suppose it's very similar because of all the wrinkles, like it's off-putting, but I honestly think this is easier than drawing fur. I'm going to put that out there, that's what I think. <laughs> just because it's like, it's just mostly smooth with a few lumps and bumps. Whereas fur, you have to get the right fur texture and get it all in the right direction. I don't know, I just think this is a little bit easier myself, just using the cotton bud again. But let me know in the comments if you've ever tried drawing fur before and if you think that this is any easier. I'm just going to blend it out a little bit. Start bringing it out. You can get blending tools for graphite, like little... Oh, I used to have some, they're like little... They're almost like similar material to the cotton bud but on a big stick but these work exactly the same you don't need to go buying those if you don't want to like just use what you've got just gonna get rid of some of these little lines a tiny bit and I'm gonna go back to the HB pencil and I'm gonna just start bringing a little bit of a base out so again just skimming over the paper really lightly Just to get a little bit of graphite on there that we'll be blending out. That'll do. And then again, just get my little cotton board, just blend that out. So far, this paper is lovely for graphite, it blends easily. It erases easily, like highly rate this so far. I think I'll definitely be repurchasing this paper because I've pretty much just run out of it as well. I've actually got um, another artist is sending me some of the Strathmore Bristol Vellum 400 series, which I think is just a little bit thicker. It's Harrier GSM, um, which she really wasn't a fan of. Um, but she said she'd give me some to try so that I don't have to buy a full pad. So that's really, really generous of her to send it out to me. And I'm excited to see what that's like. But I do like the 300 series. So maybe I'll do a video testing the two of them against one another. To see what they're like. But yeah. Now let's go back to the B pencil. And I'm just going to begin sort of bringing it upwards over that little wrinkle there I'm just looking for any darker areas and sort of just doing really light little squiggles little bits of shading just to start building it up like I said you can be quite rough with this it's not like you don't need to be extra extra careful which is nice actually I don't often get to work like this so I'm appreciating that. <laughs> I actually just blend a little bit more through the eye area too. And I'm going to carry on doing some of these little wrinkly bits. They don't need to be perfect because we are just going to be blending them out a little bit. Only like the last layer needs to be super detailed really, I guess. Like the darkest layer that we had right at the end. So till then we can be quite forgiving and we can be a little bit rough with our strokes. I'm just going to use that cotton bud again. Yeah, I'm by no means like an expert at graphite. I actually am pretty much just a self-taught artist. A lot of these techniques I've just sort of picked up from having a go, seeing what I think works best and what I don't like doing. And So, 
yeah, I'm not an art teacher. Like, I've not got a degree in art or anything like that. I've got, I did, actually did marketing at university, so, yeah. I don't think you have to be super qualified to be able to draw or teach other people to draw. Though I think a lot of it is more from experience than anything, so... That is probably like my most asked question, like if I ever go out to craft fairs and do live drawings, people always ask, oh, are you trained? Like, what are your qualifications? And I'm like, mm, I just taught myself. <laughs> like, I did do art at college and um, school and stuff, but I, as soon as I started doing it at college, I didn't enjoy it anymore. Because they didn't like this sort of style. They wanted you to be a bit more abstract, which isn't me, but hey-ho. Right, let's now, I think I'm going to stick with the B and just carry on adding a little bit more depth and texture. I really don't need to go that dark with this area. I might just be tempted to sharpen that up though a little bit, that, that wrinkle there. Great thing is you can easily just always go in and re-refine it again. The main thing is we don't want to press really hard with whatever pencil we're using because then it'll sort of like damage the grain of the paper. It has got a bit of a light grain to it, this paper. Just using that cotton bud as, as the Just using that cotton bud again. Yeah, it has got a bit of a light grain to it, which I prefer than it being like super, super smooth because it does grip the pencil a little bit better and it gives it a nicer sort of natural looking finish to it, but... Yeah, I'd rather press lightly with a darker pencil later than press really hard with like a lighter one first and ruin the paper. But that's just personal preference for me. This paper doesn't take loads and loads of layers, especially not of coloured pencil, so you do want to be careful not to press too hard on it. Lighter is better with this paper, that's for sure. Let's go back to the 2B again now. And again, I'm just going to darken it up a bit. It's all about layering with realistic drawing. Just building everything up gradually with lots and lots of layers. So that it looks natural. It starts to like bend up a little bit there, the little wrinkles. But yeah, I love how forgiving this is. Back to the cotton bud. And um, we're actually we're making quite quick progress, which is nice. I think if this was coloured pencils, I'd still be like <laughs> on the eye, probably. But yeah, I love this paper for this. I think I might start working across the face a little bit more now. So I wonder if we can just push that a little bit further without adding any more just yet. Just dab those a little bit. Yeah, we managed to stretch that out a little bit more. I think what I'll do though. I think like we did here, creating that guideline. I think we should start to create a bit. Of a guideline sort of where these really dark bits are on the horns and stuff so let's use that 2b again just because it's the darkest of the pencils that we've used so far and I'm just gonna map in a little bit 
of a guideline here where that shadowy area is. There's like a little bit that you can see coming down there and just do the edge and then let's do this bit but I'm not going to make it really dark along that edge of the horn because it is quite soft there. Just be a bit lighter there. But yeah, that bit can be quite dark. And here. And let's just lightly go around the top of that horn there. And then it's quite dark on the left of that horn. I don't like there to be any harsh outlines on my drawing unless there is a, a dark outline like here. That's just something that's like a personal preference again. I think it looks more natural if you pay attention to where the actual dark outlines are and where they're not. So yeah, let's just go back to the HB. And again, I'm just going to add a light wash of that graphite. just so that we can start to build up a little bit of like a base. You might be able to hear Paddy having a little snooze behind me. <laughs> He's asleep. For anyone who's new here, he's um, an English Bull Terrier. Two year old and he's absolutely bonkers. So whenever he's sleepy, I use that as an opportunity to film videos like this. <laughs> Right, that'll do for now. Let's just use the cotton bud again, blend that out a bit. And I have mostly just done it to the left of that horn because that's where it's shadowy. We can always build up this bit a little bit more afterwards, but yeah, just like to start there. And then let's use the B. And I'm just going to add a bit more into the dark a bit. It is going to be quite dark this bit, so we'll probably have to use a lot of different pencils to build it up. But starting light and working our way down. You might find that it starts to smudge a little bit, like here. So you can just, you can just use your eraser and clean it up if need be or wait till the end to do it it's totally up to you I like to do it as a go because I like to know that it looks right as I'm working on it could even just go straight in with the 2B now without smudging that in just add a bit more on again this isn't going to be dark enough but don't be tempted to press really hard here, just keep going light. Okay, let's blend that in a little bit now with the cotton bud. Just want it to have like a nice gradual blend through that middle bit of the horn. We go starting to take form a little bit more now okay this is where I decide whether to just keep going down the pencils gradually or whether I should skip one and just go a bit darker hmm. do you know what for the sake of testing them out let's go with freebie <laughs> and I'm just gonna do the same just make that left outline a little bit crisper and just go over so that's still not that dark darker obviously but still quite light so let's try 4b I imagine this will be quite a lot darker yeah I think I tend to skip 3b I don't know why I'll go from like 2b to 4b I don't know I think it 
you really start to see a bit more of a difference here. Still not dark enough, but definitely better. Let's try 5B. I know that some artists like to use like a black coloured pencil to get it really dark. I've never tried that, so I can't really speak for that, but yeah, let's try 6B. I don't know. I'm going to just keep it simple, I think, and just use the set that I've got without throwing anything else in there. But yeah, let's try and blend that out a little bit now. The thing with this paper is it does have a little bit of a shininess to it, so as soon as you start adding dark colours and if you start pressing on really hard it will go like really shiny, so try and avoid that as best I can by using the light layers and building things up gradually, but sometimes it can't be helped. Let's try 7B. If you don't have this set and you have a smaller set, just use like, just gradually darken it up step by step with whatever pencils you've got. So yeah, I can tell it's starting to like gradually get darker. I think it's definitely going to need that 9B to really darken it up. I probably won't use all of the pencils every time I do a dark section, it's just to see what they're all like at the minute. 8B. Let's try that. So we're definitely seeing some more depth now. Starting to really create like a nice contrast. Let's just blend that out a bit with the cotton bud before we go adding the 9B. Just want to make sure it's nice and all smushed in. Okay, let's try it. The darkest one in the set, the 9B. Let's see how this looks. Super soft. Just still using a light hand. Thing is, we can always go and add like a bit more pressure afterwards, but till I've built it all up, I'm going to be quite light. But yeah, we're going to have to be really careful that we don't smudge that. Let's just use that cotton bud again. Okay. So that's good to know, that's what it looks like if you build it up super super gradually. Let's now do this little bit here, but I'm going to skip a few pencils sort of in between rather than going and adding all of them. So let's start with, let's start with the 2B. So I'm not starting with the HB, going straight in with that darker pencil. So it is quite quite a dark area. Sometimes you don't need to like use every single pencil. Right, let's just smudge that in a bit with the cotton bud. And I'm also just gonna like smudge it as you come to the right of the horn to try and make it look a bit rounder and not like there's a crisp harsh line running down it. Do you see what I mean that there's like often lots of different ways to do things like you can build it up with every pencil or you can skip pencils or there's just like a lot of different ways to do things. I'm actually just going to blend a bit of that just at the top of that horn as well. So now this lighter area is starting to take shape because we've gone around it and built the shadows up. Okay, sort of lost its shape a little bit though. We need a bit more of like a, a contrast. Let's just use that 2B again. I feel like I just want to map 
the top top line and this bit of a line here. Just want to map all the details back in a little bit. I think I do prefer starting with that HB, you know, I feel like it just goes into the paper a little bit nicer because it's such like a hard sort of fine point and it's not overly smudgy. Just gonna add a bit more around there. Okay. And let's just Add a bit more contrast there. Smudge it a little bit. Okay, let's use then. Let's go straight to the 4B. Let's skip 3B. And just going to add a bit more of a line there above this horn. And just darken up that left edge and just start to build up a little bit more depth anywhere that I can see it being a bit darker. I'm just being a bit more careful now because I need to get the shape of this bit right. Let's add a little bit up here. Yeah, I feel like I'm just going to use the cotton bud. I'm using the HB as like the base. I say that with like inverted commas because it's not like the same as doing it with coloured pencils, but using that first and smudging it in as a base, I feel like it feels a bit grippier. I feel like as soon as you start with like 2B or anything else, it instantly feels more slippy and soft. So yeah, I think I will be using that HB as the base going forwards, but just smudge it in a bit more around there. But yeah, it's looking good. I'm really happy with this so far. Let's just go back to the HB. I'm just going to add a little bit like a texture in this horn. Just want to build a little bit of that up. It's looking a little bit flat and unnatural because it would never be that smooth. Some little bits here. And then let's just smudge that a little bit with the cotton bud. I feel like you're probably used to the process by now. Of drawing and smudging. Um, let's see. Let's start to also add a little bit of texture into this horn. So I'm just doing that little sideways sort of, what would you call that? Bit of texture, I don't even know what to call that. And do a little bit there. Little ridge, I suppose, little line. <laughs> I'm not good at describing actual like names of things. Bring it round a little bit there. Smudge it a little bit. That HB, it just, I don't know what it is, it just seems to like grip into that paper a little bit more. You can be a bit more fine and detailed with it. Obviously because it's a harder pencil. But Also just going to use that, bring that down through that little bit there. And carry on, just bringing that bit of a, a line 
around here. And I'm also just going to do some little lines sort of going this way to start building up that texture a bit more there. And then smudge it a little bit. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that so far. Let's use the next darkest colour to do this like dark area. And I'm going to skip a pencil again and I'm going to use the 6B. So skip in the 5B. Just darkening that up a little bit more. Getting that contrast. Blending it in. You can even add a bit more in here if you want. just smudge. It's starting to look good that though. I think I'm going to start now just sort of this little gap here. I feel like I need to fill it in with a bit more detail. So we've not used the B for a while and I think we could use that to build up a bit more of the wrinkles and detail around here. So there's like some little bits Little darker bits. Just doing little squiggles to build it up. Definitely need a bit more around here. Some little like bits of texture here. So just being a bit squiggly with my pencil. I'm not, I'm not trying to be too perfect and get every single little line and thing in the same place as the picture. I'm sort of using it as a bit of inspiration and like sort of having a bit of artistic license and as long as it gives the same effect, it doesn't need to be absolutely spot on taking inspiration from the reference more than anything let's add a little bit up here sort of using like the flat side of my pencil and just sort of moving it around I'm not really twisting my pencil around as much just sort of holding it again quite far down and using the flat bit and just sort of using my shoulder or elbow more to like move around rather than moving my wrist around. I just find it helps to give a bit more of a natural sort of squiggly effect. Okay, then smudge with the cotton bud. A little bit up here. Could always go back over and do another layer with the B, or maybe it's time to darken it up with the 2B. Let's have a go. So 2B. And I think first I'm just going to need to darken this top bit up a little bit more. So 
So I'm just concentrating a little bit of that there. And let's add some more little bits of detail here. I'm just going to add a few more of these little, little lines and stuff in. And let's smudge or blend, whatever you want to call it. So we're starting to really build up the texture and the form and shape of that face. So we've got a, a way to go with it, but we're getting there. Right. Let's try a bit of the 4B and I'm just going to, again, I want to darken that bit up there above the horn just to give it a bit more depth. It's like a little, little bit there. like bring a bit of a line down there might even just darken some of these bits up a bit more and this bit and this bit we'll add a little bit more around here so I like leaving little gaps for like the lighter bits of skin to show through and I'm just gonna smudge again There we go. I'm really pleased with how this is coming along. Let's try some of the 6B. Just darken up this little bit here. Create a bit more contrast. even add a little bit into the eye you know I feel like that could be darker you can't really see much of the eye like there's no highlight or anything in there but it's more just about getting the shape of it right really so just add that anywhere you feel like you want it to be a bit darker a little bit of a wrinkle goes like sideways there it's just I can show that's in the right place do I can help a bit there I even just add a bit more there So yeah, it's very soft and dark, that pencil. I'm just going to smudge it in a bit. Blend a bit more up there, possibly. I 
and blend a bit more down here. It does smudge easily so you can just sort of create that base layer by smudging the surrounding areas. I think I just need a little bit of a guideline here. Let's use the 2B again. I feel like that's a nice one to use when I'm trying to create like a, a bolder line but not too bold that will smudge really easily. So Paddy's woke up now so I'm not sure how much more time I've got before it starts being noisy. <laughs> but yeah, I've just added that little bit there. Bit of a guideline. And let's just start to bring that down a bit. Don't really want to go too much further. Darken that bit up a tad. Right, I might just leave that there because I feel like I'm happy with the progress that we've made and I feel like Paddy's getting ready to be noisy so <laughs> yeah we'll leave that there for part one. There we go. So yeah we'll leave that there for part one. Do give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see the next part and more tutorials like this. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one so bye for now.